Our next winner is the Reuters Fellowship to Jake Kincaid from Columbia Graduate School of Journalism, presented by Tiffany Wu of Reuters, Editor of Americas. Um, Jake's desire to become a foreign correspondent started in Taylor Square and then was fine-tuned during his time as a freelance journalist in Nicaragua and Colombia. He's heading off to a fellowship with Reuters in Mexico City. So before deciding to focus on journalism, I was dedicated to rock and ice climbing. I can tell you that uh, hanging off a cliff, a 2,000 foot tall cliff, isn't as scary as public speaking. Uh, climbing taught me to work in teams under intense pressure, to be self-reliant, and maintain a clear head in disorienting situations while practicing good risk management. When you live on a vertical granite wall for days, you and your partner rely on each other to get every detail right when setting up complex safety systems um, and guiding each other up the face. You need to know when to push through fear and when to ignore your ego and turn back. These skills, I've also found, are critical to foreign correspondence. In April 2018, when a popular uprising against Daniel Ortega broke out, I moved to Nicaragua to cover the crisis. Uh, I expected to be covering large chaotic protests. I brought an exceptionally long zoom lens, hoping it would compensate for a lack of press credentials and body armor. Um, instead, I found myself in the mix of a crackdown that had silenced civic protests and military force by throwing protesters in jail and charging them as terrorists. Um, so instead of using a zoom lens, I got struck to I got close to subjects by traveling to rural villages to interview people who were hiding from the government. Um, you know, I, I remember one 18-year-old student uh, who had been living in the jungle on the slopes of a volcano for weeks, fisting on bread and honey, um, trying to outrun the military with a group of other fugitives before he got sick of it and decided to go home. Uh, he thought he'd be fine. He was only marginally involved in the protests, um, but the next night, the military surrounded his house and finally interrogated him and his family. Um, you know, his, face, his eyes were still small and sharp when I interviewed him a couple days later. Um, so you know, remembering people like him motivates me to keep doing this work. Um, I'm drawn to it because it's journalists who people turn to when they want to know if um, people are getting shot at and threatened in jail because they're violent criminals or because they want to protest and disagree with the government. Um, it's, a, it's a privilege to give truth a voice and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to continue this work. Thanks.